Welcome to Taylor Swift's Journey to Fearless. You belong with me. You belong with me. This is a story of a little girl who dared to dream big. From her earliest performances. And we do mean early. To her first big break. That was my first huge crowd experience. Then I was addicted. And the challenges along the way. And I went through periods of time where I didn't have friends. That was tough as a mom to hear the shunning. She didn't know it then, but even as a kid, Taylor Swift was fearless. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm 11. I want a record deal. You give me a call. That would be awesome. We'll show you everything that went into making Fearless happen and share with you the inspiration behind some of your favorite songs. It was a song about a breakup that I had to really address. Come on the road with Taylor for her first headlining tour. Spend the next three nights backstage, on stage, and around the world for Taylor Swift's Journey to Fearless. Looking for 
my first memory of loving music happened so early. We would always go to the beach in the summer and I would run from blanket to blanket, from family to family, and just sing. Yay, Taylor! Whoa! I got my first guitar when I was eight or nine years old. I couldn't motivate myself to learn because my fingers were too small. I always had the guitar around and had it in the corner. And uh, when I was about 12, this magical twist of fate, the guy who my parents had hired to come fix my computer, I'm doing my homework. And uh, he looks over and sees the guitar in the corner. And he was like, do you play guitar? And I said, oh, no, I, I tried, but I, no. He said, do you want me to teach you a few chords? And I was like, yeah, yes. That was that. I was just relentless about wanting to play all the time. I was songwriting for all of my free time after that. I think the first full song that I ever wrote was called Lucky You, and it was about this girl who dares to be different. At that time, that was sort of, you know, d describing herself. I got teased a lot, and I got made fun of a lot, and I, you know, went through periods of time where I didn't have friends because all the other little girls were going to sleepovers and playing soccer, and, and Taylor wanted to sing on a stage, and that was a little bit different. And I stood there in the middle of the uh, giant basketball arena and with my little sparkly American flag shirt and my white pants and my red headband. I was very patriotic looking. I don't think I had ever been that nervous in my life. Once again, Taylor Swift. They would do a write-up in the local paper causing a not-so-fun day for me the next day at school. My worst time of the day was when I went to go pick up Taylor at school, and I would know that things maybe hadn't been so great that day at school, and so I knew I was going to hear whatever happened. And so um, that was tough as a mom to hear the um, ostracizing that went through, the uh, literally the shunning that would take place at school, where she would sit down at a table with her lunch tray and everyone would move. As a parent, there, there is nothing more painful than hearing that your child is in pain. You'll take, you'll take any bullet for them, but you realize that this is also something that they have to go through. So that's when I got it in my mind that there was this magical place called Nashville where dreams come true and Faith Hill got discovered. And I thought to myself, Nashville, well, I've got to go there. I begged my parents for, I think, a solid year. Please, can we take a trip to Nashville? Just nonstop. I want to go to Nashville. Just relentlessly. It was all she talked about. So on spring break, we went to Nashville to go check it out. Everyone you meet in Nashville has the same dream. And a lot of them wanted to be exactly what I wanted to be, which was an artist and want to be on the stage in front of a lot of people. Taylor would, you know, say, that's Mercury Records, pull over. You know, I would need to run my demo CD. I'd get out and I'd run up to the door. Hi, I'm Taylor. Uh, I'm 11. I want a record deal. If you could give me a call, that would be awesome. And I knew that I had to figure out some way to be different, some way to get better uh, and have more to offer. Music was something that was so necessary for me to be happy. I would play for hours and hours until my fingers were bleeding. She never put it down. She wouldn't put it down. We'd have to literally say to her, all right, put the guitar down, come to dinner, then you can go right back and play. But it, it became a matter of forcing her to put it down at that point. I just fell in love with it. decided to move to Nashville when Taylor had actually been offered a development deal. At that point, we knew we weren't just proud parents and that maybe we should put her in the area where she could make the most of it. When I was 13, I landed a meeting with um, a record label in town, RCA. They gave me a development deal, which is basically like, we believe in you, kind of. We're going to watch you. 
It's not like you're making an album now. Taylor and I would go in there sometimes once a week with new songs that she had written. They would look at us and say, well, it's getting a little closer. They weren't saying, yes, that's a great song. Let's put it on a record. At the end of the year, they had a chance to either sign me or watch me for another year without commitment. They looked at us and said, you know what? She's, we're not ready to offer a record deal. I did something that you don't usually do in Nashville when you have an in with a record label. I walked away because I had a feeling that I was not going to be able to record my own music uh, that I'd written. I looked at her sort of panic-stricken like, this is a major record label. You don't get that every day. Are you sure you want to walk away from this? And she said, absolutely. I had this showcase at the Bluebird Cafe, ironically the place where Faith Hill got discovered. And I played my guitar and sang a bunch of songs that I'd written. There was one guy in the audience named Scott Borchetta. So he came up to me at, after the show and he said, I want you on my record label and I want you to write all your own music. And I was so excited. And I get a call from him later that week and he goes, hey, so the good news is I want you on my record label. The bad news is that I don't actually have a record label yet. Well, he explained to me that he doesn't have a building, he doesn't have a name for it. He just has this dream that he wants to do it. And so he says, will you just please wait for me? And for some reason, I was willing to wait for that because she believed in the person who was gonna be running that record label and he really believed in her. I knew that if I could be a part of building something from the ground up, of being the first artist on a brand new record label, that would be okay with me as long as I could do something really adventurous and bold and new. So I signed my record deal with Scott Borchetta, and um, I was making an album full of songs that I had written by myself. This little red thing, this red guy is the, the best windscreen you got, so they won't hear that. It's awesome. There was no <laughs> inclination that this was gonna work out, um, but we really believed in it. Putting out my first single was just such a cool experience because I just didn't know what was going to happen. I remember putting the physical CD singles into envelopes to mail out to radio with my mom. I got to go on radio tour. And you hear tour, you think tour bus? No, rental car, Taurus, me, in the back seat. Hi, baby. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I brought you cookies. Sure did, look at that. Going from radio station to radio station to radio station, and every time I would go into a new radio station, I would play in the conference room for a couple of DJs, and I would like beg them to put me on the air. And it worked. My album sold 39,000 in the first week, and then over time, it started to sell like this. Then something really crazy started to happen. I was opening up for every single country headliner imaginable. I was opening up for Brad Paisley, George Strait, Kenny Chesney, Tim McGraw, like all these people I'd always wanted to open up shows for. I was a nervous wreck. I'd rehearsed nonstop over and over again, but I loved it. Those were some of my favorite times. For this song, I would love it if you would have your cell phones and glow sticks or anything sparkly that you might have. Hold them up for me. And I would love it if you would sing along with this song. Because this is the first song that you ever heard from me. Just a boy in a Chevy truck that 
had a tendency of getting stuck back roads now. Song. When we dance to all night long, moon like a spotlight on the big. Do you think happiness? I hope you think that little black dress. Think of my head on your chest and my old faded blue jeans. When you think Tim McGraw, I hope you think of me. September side. Of tears and thinking God that you weren't here to see me like that. But in a box beneath my bed is a letter that you never read three summers back. It's hard not to find it all a little bittersweet and the Back on all the that it's nice to believe when you think Tim McGraw. I hope you think my favorite song, the one we dance to all night long. The moon like a spotlight on the bed. When you think happiness, I hope you think that little black dress. Think of my head on your chest and my old faded blue jeans. I hope you think of me It was such a cool energy walking through that crowd. People are crying. Uh, and I love excitable people, so it was, it was one of my favorite things. I just, I hug a lot of people over the course of uh, that song. show a lot of extra love to the little kids that I know are there for their first concert. It was really important for me to go out there and actually say hi to people and thank them for coming and be right there next to them because I'm always gonna wanna go the extra mile for them because I can't believe the extra thousand miles they've gone for me. favorite things every single night. And now I'm back for the first time since then. I'm standing on your street. There's a letter left on your doorstep. And the first thing that you read is when you think Tim McGraw. I hope you think my favorite song. Turn Houston radio on. I hope it takes you back to that place. When you think happiness, I hope you think that little black dress. Think of my head on your chest and my old faded blue jeans. When you think Tim McGraw, I hope you think of me. Thank
I absolutely, I just loved school. And I'm so glad that I got to go to high school. All the kids were so nice. I wasn't weird for the first time. Woo! They didn't really think much of it, that I wanted to be a singer. On the first day of ninth grade, walking into high school, uh, first class that I went to, I sat next to this girl. She had red hair, and uh, we became friends immediately, uh, just because I think we were the most cynical people in English class. We just kind of understood each other, and we were bitter about the same things. We were happy about the same things. We had the same goals, and um, we really hit it off. She became the person that I would play all my songs for after I'd written them. I truly, truly appreciate those moments when she wants to play something new for me. That's my favorite time to witness her doing what she loves is when she's just raw. I would go over to her house like, and we'd sit in her room and I'd play it for her. She was like a huge cheerleader. I'll compliment her to no end and she acts just so shocked. And she'll just look at me and be like, really? Thank you, thank you so much. She's just so grateful. I wanted to write a song about what both of us went through. Abigail and I were 15, we were freshmen in high school, and you know, you're just navigating this huge world. Being 15, 16, those are, those are some of the hardest years as a girl. I mean, that's when you're developing and trying to figure out who you are. And you're the tiniest little minnow in this huge ocean that is high school. And you learn lessons, you learn a lot of them the hard way. Take a deep breath and you walk through the doors. It's the morning of your very first day. You see how do your friends you seen in a while? Try and stay out of everybody's way. It's a freshman year and you're gonna be here for the next four years and this. One of those senior boys will wink at you and say, you know I haven't seen you around before. Cause when you're 15, somebody tells you they love you, you gonna be Sit in class next to what I think I would give Soon enough your best friends Laughing at the other girls who think they're so cool We'll be out of here as soon as we can I remember when I played Abigail the song for the first time It was just a guitar vocal She was just blown away I couldn't believe it, and it was very touching, and it still is to this day. The 
it's a very personal story of hers that gets told in that song. It's really raw and real. Everybody asks me, does that make you uncomfortable? And not in the least, because looking around in the audience and seeing people relating to the song, that's all I ask for. Back when I swore I was gonna marry him someday But I realized some bigger dreams of mine And Abigail gave everything she had to a boy And changed his mind And we both cried I'm honored that she would want to talk about me and, and something that I've experienced and what better than to put in a song and share with millions of people? It was one of my favorite things about that song is that she's so proud that maybe her story can help other girls to make the right decisions. You know, like the song says, just look before you fall. Take a deep breath, girl. Take a deep breath, cause you walk through the doors. A lot of the songs on my first record have little hints of high school inspiration. have the song You Belong With Me, which is about, you know, feeling inferior to the coolest girl in school um, because she's a cheerleader and she's awesome and you're just like, hey, you know? I mean, for me, like, uh, I think that I learned so much from just sitting there and feeling everything in high school. And um, Teardrops on My Guitar, which is a complete confessional that you're in love with someone. Once upon a time, there was this guy, and I was like, talking about this guy in school, and let's just write the name into the song. And this guy used to sit next to me in class. I started naming people in my songs when I started to, you know, have bigger crushes on people. I was like, you need to walk up to him right now and let him know how you feel, who you are. Okay, confession. I had the biggest crush on this guy. And, well, he didn't even know I existed. But every day, just like clockwork, this guy would come into class. And every day, just like clockwork, this guy would sit down next to me. And sometimes, he would even talk to me. About his girlfriend. So I never told this guy that I liked him. 
But I did write a song about him. So I think he knows now. With Drew, everybody knew who that one was about. He won't see that I want that I need everything that we should be. Ah, but she's beautiful. That girl he talks about, and she's got everything that I have to live with. That. I couldn't believe it. This was the first time I'd ever seen her go this personal with a song. Laugh, cause it's just so funny that I can't even see anyone when he's with me. He says he's so in love, he's finally got it right. I wonder if he knows he's all I think about it now. He's a reason for the tear drops in my guitar. The only thing that keeps me wishing on. With Drew, he actually showed up in my driveway like a year and a half later. I don't know. Sometimes it gets awkward. Yeah, that was really awkward. I think she was shocked. <laughs> we were like, wow, who thought that was going to happen? So I drive on the love as I turn out the light. I'll put his picture down and maybe get some sleep tonight. He's the reason for the tear drops in my guitar. The only one who's got enough for me to break my heart. It's a song in the car. I keep singing, don't know why I do. He's the top, taking up, but this never enough. And he's all but a me to fall into. He won't see. We had CMA rehearsals earlier today, and now I'm getting on a plane to go to New York for one night and then to all of tomorrow. When you are releasing a new album, you just go nuts with your schedule. You just go crazy. Craziest week of my life. When it was time for the Fearless album to be released, we both looked at each other and realized that she just was living her dream. Taylor Swift! Oh my god, oh, you made our day. Oh my yeah, so today was crazy. Like, we literally woke up at 4.45 and then got up hair and makeup for Good Morning America and went to Good Morning America, sound check, did all the, the performances for that, did the interview for that. And then left and went to MTV. I did like all these news interviews and stuff. Hey Trisha, I love you and I just want to say happy birthday. And then went to WPLJ. Taylor Swift. Thank you so much for coming, you guys. This is awesome. My new album, Fearless, is out today, and I'm so excited. And after that, <laughs> we went to David Letterman, and that's the first time I've ever played there, so it was really cool. Taylor! 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 Taylor!
I was so excited about Letterman. It was such a fun show, and um, I, it was fun playing Fearless Acoustic. Now I am on a plane, and I'm about to go home, and I'm going to go buy my CD. At midnight of my album being released, I was at the Hendersonville Walmart. 11.59, and we're gonna go buy the album, and I'm really excited. And there were a bunch of people there, and we all just were so excited. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. And they were all buying the album, and I was buying the album. You did a great job. Really hard on this. Yep. Good job. And it's real. It's just, it's crazy to think that, you know, have a CD out in all these stores and and that a bunch of people would show up and buy the album with me. It was it was a really fun experience. I won't forget it. But I love you so much. Thank you for being here for me buying my second CD. First <laughs> midnight, I love you. Now I finally am not in, I'm not doing anything anymore. I'm on a plane. <laughs> this day is over and it has been the longest day ever. When the Fearless album came out, it sold 596,000 in the first week. And I was really happy about that. Considering the first record, I was like freaking out about sell selling 39,000 in the first week. Selling 596,000 in the first week was quite an improvement. Shotgun with my hair undone in the front seat of his car. He's got a one hand feel on the steering wheel, the other on my heart. I look around, turn the radio down. He says, Baby, is something wrong? I say nothing. I was just thinking how we don't have a song. And he says, Our song is the same as Green Door. Sneak it out, ain't topic on you. And I should have And when I got For I said amen Asking God to be Good play it again well, I was walking up the front door steps After everything that day I'd gone all wrong I'd been trampled on And lost and thrown away Got to the hallway Well, I'm not Notice all the roses and the note that said Our song is the same as green door Sneaking out ain't tapping on you We you know when we're on the phone And you talk real slow Cause it's late and your mama don't know Our song is the way you left First date, man, I didn't kiss her and I should have
shotgun with my hair undone in the front seat of his car. I got the pen and an old napkin and I wrote down our song. Welcome to Taylor Swift's Journey to Fearless. I could never have imagined how those 13 songs would change my life. Taylor's drive and determination pays off as Fearless becomes the top-selling album two years straight. Wow, who thought that was gonna happen? You know, people will ask me, like, when did you know, you know, that she had made it? 2009 was a pretty good start. And the entertainer of the year nominees are Kenny Chesney, Brad Paisley, Jordan Schultz, Brad Paisley, George Strait, Taylor Swift. That was a good year. And then won Grammy for Album of the Year when I was 20. Watch as Taylor Swift transforms her Fearless album into her first headlining tour. This comes out during Love Story and it's gonna be projected where these look like castles. Welcome to the Fearless Tour 2010. She was the youngest person ever to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. Building the dream as Taylor takes us on her journey to fearless. I can't help myself. Day was a fairy tale, you were the prince. I used to be a damsel in distress. You took me by the hand, and then you picked me up at six. Day was a fairy tale. Of different elements that I've found fascinating in life. I love costume changes. I love sparkles. I love glitter. I love the element of surprise. Those are all things that I wanted to bring together and put on that stage. I had been dreaming about doing my first headlining tour, I think, since I was four years old. The stage for the Fearless Tour was something that I spent a lot of time designing with Jonathan Smeaton, my stage designer. I wanted the stage to be part of the picture and part of the visual, not just something we were standing on. My stage was built in a warehouse in Nashville, and pulling up to see it for the first time felt kind of like being dropped off on the first day of school. <laughs> so excited. I was um, a nervous wreck. Nobody's seen anything, right? I had always wanted to put together a show that incorporated theater and storytelling and the songwriting and what I saw in my head when I was writing these songs. I'm actually nervous. I have like butterflies in my head. We did the best we could. Okay, let's 
I walked in and saw it. What? That's huge. Are you even this serious? This is giant. And it was glorious. That's what it'll be. That is so rocking. When Taylor first laid eyes on that stage for the first time, it was like opening a present Christmas morning, the biggest present she's ever had. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Do you want to go? <gasps> yeah. Do you guys want to do the lift? It was this pristine, sparkling white stage with staircases and all these different shapes, and you could project different visuals onto the stage. This comes out during Love Story, and it's going to be projected where these look like castles, right? And so we've been able to turn this whole thing into a story. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right, this is good. Happy? Yes. I don't think that I ever expected I would be on a big stage like this when I started out. This is pretty giant. I could fall off of this and die, which is awesome. Uh, can I please see you put your hands in the air? Now, I would like to take you back in time. I wanted the dancers on this tour because, um, I, not because I really wanted too much choreography or because I wanted this to be like a dance show. I wanted this to be a show where I could tell a story using other people. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really excited. Today we auditioned the dancers. We decided that we wanted to make the audition an open call for anyone so that anybody could audition. We were both young when I first saw you I close my eyes and the flashback starts I'm standing there Get your attention just for a minute. If we can get everybody to line up over here, let's put the guys over here. There were three days of auditions for the dancers. First thing we're doing is the choreography from Love Story, the music video. That'll be the first thing we do. Right now, we're about to go check out the dancers. They're all at callbacks, and we have to pick six. Three guys and three girls, and I'm really excited. Like, really think about that. There's no country artist. This is huge. This is really big that she's bringing dancers on, on, on tour. Taylor's pushing the envelope here. Like, big time pushing the envelope. And I think that's amazing. <laughs> You're going to check across from each other, touching each other's wrists. Yeah? Walk, walk, triple step, walk, walk, triple step throughout this whole dance. Cool? Super easy. That's the timing. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Hey! Hey! I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.
Come on. For you. So why don't we go ahead and just get started? So we'll get everybody back there. Ready? And. and 27. Cool. Everybody else, uh, step to that side. Auditioning the dancers, we all just kind of had a vibe uh, about a few of them right off the bat. We are about to uh, bring the dancers in, and they know that they've got the job. They just think they're going to get another call back. So we're going to just kind of welcome them onto the tour for the summer. I'm excited. I just wanted to say welcome to the tour. Thank you so much for coming. We cannot <laughs> I will see you guys on the road. <laughs> With the dancers ready, it was time for the fearless tour rehearsals to begin. <laughs> Rehearsing for the fearless tour took about a month. Rehearsal is really important because you're working on blocking, wardrobe, audio. It's kind of like tour boot camp. When I went like that, like white confetti from the ceiling, like the, the treatment to this song is like I'm marrying the wrong guy. You guys want to do this? During rehearsal, you really get a chance to iron out all the kinks. Like, for example, the smoke machine. Sort of a volcanic eruption up here. And I messed up the piano in a gorgeous, heinous way. <laughs> so. There's nothing better than watching hard work pay off. Grant, that was so perfect. You didn't look at your guitar like once. Right. That was perfect. It was time for the Fearless Tour to hit the road. Putting together a tour, you're providing jobs for about 150 people. You've got those people touring with you, setting up catering, driving trucks, driving buses, the band, the dancers, the crew, everybody who builds that stage, puts it together, the carpenters, wardrobe. You have people in the production office, people who work with the promotions company. It's a big contraption. And finally, the moment we were all waiting for. Stepping on stage in front of all of you, my amazing fans. Before the opening night in Evansville, Indiana, uh, we were just all so nervous. The band, I kept running through every single cue, every single lighting cue, every single drum hit in my head, just trying to make sure that I could remember everything. It's a two hour production, so making sure that you remember everything is key.
night, we do a cross arena trek. And I wish that I had some sort of counter on my feet that could tell me how many miles we have walked, all for the purpose of surprising the audience and me popping up in the back of the arena. There are like a lot of super fans who know that we do it, and they don't know where we're gonna end up, but they'll like be scouring the entire concourse for us. We make the walk every night through the back tunnels and passageways of the arena, up elevators, up staircases, into suites. We hide in snack bars, and it's really funny because like a lot of times there will be like a group of people waiting for us. Kind of bring the show right there to them, like six inches from them. So it's really a fun moment. When we pop out, it's really, really cool. The reaction is just utter surprise. And there's a moment where, like, I'll walk out and one person will notice it, screams, and screams ignite everywhere. And it's really cool. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Al Wilson on the drums and Angus Heller on the bass. And then I hand off my guitar to Devin and I walk down the aisles and um, I just really like to hug people. I think going out into the crowd for Taylor is what she needs to do during a show to feel that connection with her audience. Um, it's. It's hard for her to just stay on the stage. It's just really fun because, like, there are all these little kids, um, and there's all these cute guys, and there are all these girls that are just like me. And I don't know, I love those people so much. And getting to go out there and, and tell them that, like, look them in the eye and tell them that, or I'll give them my bracelets and stuff. It's just really fun. It's my favorite part of the night. I think that she looks at them and sees these looks on their faces, and she has to get closer. There are a lot of guys that look like football players who would not necessarily have bought Fearless, uh, but they know all the words, and it makes me so happy listening to them like sing like she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. Like, I love that. stage at the end of the arena so part of the show the best seat in the house are what you used to think were the worst seats in the house ha switcheroo see what we did there Steven, I could give you
All those other girls, well, they're beautiful. But oh, what they write a song for you. making my way to the back of the arena. I wanted there to be something for the crowd to watch so that they wouldn't be just like sitting there in silence. Um, I wanted there to be some sort of funny little video. Tonight, we examine a crime unlike any I've seen in my entire career. And so we created this video called Crimes of Passion that's a crime show, a spoof crime show, about all of the guys I've written songs about complaining about how their lives have been changed by me writing songs about them. You know, I walk down the street, I hear people say, Drew walks by me. I, I try to start up a conversation with someone. Drew talks to me. I don't, do you see what I'm saying? Some of the people were actually the actual guys who inspired the songs. Well, yeah, you know, people forget that, that I was actually the very first victim of a Taylor Swift song. I, now, everywhere I go, it's like everybody knows my name. It's sort of like I've been plucked from obscurity. And uh, I was really proud of that piece. Happy birthday, Taylor. Thank you. It's a toaster. Yeah. Look, there's something I've never asked you before. What's that? How do you spell Neil? Is it with an A or with an I? It's N-E-A-L. Great. You know what's really cool? What? How many words rhyme with Neil? Every night the crowd gives me so much and I wanted to give them something back. was put together because of what the fans have done for me in the last couple of years. I love you, Taylor. You're the best. And so I wanted a lot of the fun things that we did and new concepts that we came up with to benefit those fans. And one of my favorite things about this tour is that we had a reward for the craziest fans. If they were just insane and crazy and had, like, costumes on and signs and if they were just having a great time and dancing and like freaking out throughout the entire show it's a possibility that they could get randomly picked for the tea party the tea party is the gorgeous moroccan tent magical enchanted looking living room that we have backstage i'm just so in love with you houston During the show, we would have a team of people that would go out there and look for the most over-the-top Taylor fans and then tell them that they're coming to the tea party after the show to meet Taylor. And that is usually when you hear shrieks in the audience. <laughs> if you ever hear that high-pitched scream when you're at a Fearless concert, most likely somebody has just gotten tea party passes. <laughs> Party. 
I wanted them to have a place to sit down, eat, feel comfortable, have something to drink, play ping pong, watch TV, do whatever they wanted to do because um, they've made a lot of this possible for me. So that's why you'll see lots and lots of fans with signs to say, bring me to the tea party and tea party please. That's what goes down after the show every single night. It's, it's really fun because nobody who goes to the tea party is, is expecting that they're gonna get picked. party is a way for me to get to meet people after the show who I fell in love with during the concert who were just who I just felt so grateful to have on my side the tea party room gives me an opportunity to say that to them and to give them a hug and it, it really feels cool that we've done that every single night I was never good at sports or anything that had a team element to it until this. My band have been with me for about three years now, which is just something I'm very proud of because in the music industry, you have people just switching out players every two seconds. But we have a family. The, the band, they're my best friends. Let's see. Al Wilson is an absolute loving and marvelous individual. Paul Sedoti is the jukebox. That guy knows everything there is to know about music. Grant Michelson is the supermodel. He pulls off looks and clothes that no one else in the world that I know can. Mike Meadows is the pillar that keeps us all steady. Liz Hewitt is the goofy little sister with the voice of an angel. Caitlin Evanson is an absolute rock star, a relentless stream of energy on stage. And then there's me. I'm pretty cool. This is a group of people who I'm gonna know for the rest of my life and I wanna know their kids, and I wanna go to their weddings. Um, and to see them live their lives for the past three or four years that I've known them has just been unbelievable. I just, I couldn't live without them. They're my favorite people in the world. I've just always wanted to make everybody feel like they were part of a family. She goes out of her way to make you feel a part of her life. Happy birthday, Paul. Absolutely. Someone wants to talk to you. Um, I think his name is Gene. Hello? Hello? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh my God. We're a pretty cohesive unit. Uh, and it's, it's inspiring uh, to be around and to be on stage with. So you, there's no nerves, you know? It's a family, you know? It's a great place to be. And I'm more nervous walking around during the day than I am right before I go on stage with them. I had no idea that I was going to become part of such a wonderful, loving family. It creates this band of a bunch of different people, but we're all unique in a special way. And that's, you know, we're all best friends. It's a family. And that's what the magic is that you feel when we're up on stage every night. She loves her fans. She loves her best friends. We are our family. And uh, well, I think she kind of sums up love in her life by this. They all know that I love doing this, and I do this in a lot of pictures, and I do this on stage. For tonight's show, I would love to hear from 
we pick someone to give a speech before we go on stage. And then afterward, we put our hands in and we say, now let's go out there and be fearless. Let's go out there and be fearless. Sharing this experience with them, unforgettable. Beautiful today, Miss Taylor. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm five years old, it's getting cold. I've got my big coat on. I hear your laugh and look up, smiling at you. I run and run. One of the most unique things about my journey to Fearless is that. I got to share this wonderful, crazy experience with my family. On the Fearless Tour backstage, they referred to me as Mama Swift. And I don't mean to be, I really am not trying to be a prude here, but if I'm the mom of a 10-year-old girl in the audience, there were just a couple of moves there that I would be like. Mm. No, you're right, you're looking at that. <laughs> my mom has come out on the road with us, and she's always around. Oh my God. 
I feel very lucky to be out on the Fearless Tour because um, I have a 20-year-old daughter, and a lot of 20-year-olds don't necessarily want to hang with their moms all the time, although I'm pretty lucky because mine apparently does. Sometimes, you know, I mean, there's, there's not much to do, so you'll just, you know, you'll just get a golf cart and, like, We learned early on in the whole touring experience when I was 15 and started doing radio tour. We learned how to deal with each other on the road. My mom is all in charge of just basically greeting people and making people feel welcome. Thank you. She would find a group of like 25 to 30 people and take them on a backstage tour and give them sort of the Mama Swift version of the way the tour works. All right, well, you were promised a backstage tour. This is about as backstage as it gets because this is Taylor's stage and you are in back of it. I know you're not scared of anything at all. The first thing we're gonna look at are these big, big, massive trucks. Mama Swift's backstage tour. That covers our trucks. Should we uh, maybe go see buses now? <laughs> Um, I, you know, I don't even begin to understand how this happened, but I, I do love it. And we have 72 costume changes. So, Also, other jobs that she has out here are very important. She draws the 13 on my hand every night. 13's my lucky number, so. My mom has always been very logical, very practical, and I think that's why I've always been that way. I wish you could have seen the expressions of people's faces when the when they saw the water come down. Oh my god, they were like, what? <laughs> like, oh my god, she's Oh, is that what they were saying? <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> my dad's the one who's like, I had this crazy idea. Or, you know, he's the daydreamer. He's the one who's always like walking around the shows with a bag of Taylor Swift guitar picks in his pocket and hands them out to fans. Would you like a pick? I think. <laughs> this is what I do. I give away picks to people. My parents, I just lucked out. I'm going to go sneak up on my dad in a store. You know, to have two people who really believed in me. That's weird. It's just I'm so lucky to have parents that actually took that trip with me, took that incredible, impossible journey. This is the uh, backstage pass from 2007. There's a lot of memories on there. It's really pretty cool. My mom and I have always been best friends, and that's really helped because we really don't fight um, like you would imagine a teenage girl going on the road with her mom all the time. Um, we have little disagreements every once in a while, but most of the time we just, we get along really, really well. I know I'm laughing on the car ride home with you. Don't know how long it's gonna take to feel okay, but I know I had the best day with you today. Taylor and her mom have an incredible bond. And I think it is awesome that Taylor has someone around her at all times that she can confide in and get advice from or just talk to and hang out and be herself with, that she never has to question that. She sits at the soundboard every night and watches the show. It's really cool to know that someone from your family is always gonna be there watching to make sure that um, everything's okay. I see a, this massive audience that is so connected with her, and I see that that relationship going on, be, you know, before my very eyes, and I just, I fall in love with that audience because of what they're giving her. I played the song The Best Day on Mother's Day as a surprise for my mom. That's a song that I wrote about her. She was sitting there at the soundboard, and, um, I surprised her with it, and she cried, cried and cried, and it was really, really fun to sing that song to her. I do allow myself little, little micro seconds of stepping back and looking at it from the outside in, and, um, and that is when I lose it completely. You set up a pink set in the kitchen, and you're talking to me. 
there are times when I look at this young woman and everything she's accomplished and where she is, um, and yet I still see that little girl in the car seat with those big blue eyes in my rearview mirror. I say, that's my baby, and I'm real proud. Welcome to Taylor Swift's Journey to Fearless. I just got the news that my tour sold out Madison Square Garden in one minute. One. Yes! One, two! Join Taylor as she travels the globe with her sold out Fearless Tour. The Fearless Tour has been one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And guess who she found on one of her stops? Hey guys, it's Justin. Join Justin Bieber and thousands of fans as Taylor Nation takes over the Fearless Grand Finale. That arena sold out in two minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just another picture to bear. The excitement builds for Taylor Swift's Journey to Fearless. I was so happy that uh, we waited for the right time in my career where we could put together this tour that was visual and we had costumes and dancers and people acting out parts and it just incorporated such a theatrical element to that tour and it had so much heart and that's what I'm the most proud of. Said no, gone home. I was hoping that the tour would be successful but I had no idea that the fans response would be so amazing. Fearless Tour turned out to be so much bigger than I ever could have imagined it. Completely rewarding and just overwhelming. Back up, baby, back up. It's really, really a wonderful thing to know that every night that we walked on stage this tour, it's sold out. Like, that's the coolest thing in the world. Everything. feeling that you dream of having. It makes everything worthwhile. It makes every early morning worthwhile. It makes everything just make sense. That's just a dream come true. That's just something you fantasize and dream about. That's not something that really happens, is it? Daydreaming about what that might be like. To 
find that one great love where all of a sudden everything that used to seem so complicated became simple. And everything that used to seem wrong all of a sudden seemed right because you were with the person who made you feel fearless. When it's just a rain, there's a glow off the pavement. You walk me to a car, and you know I wanna ask you to dance right there in the middle of the parking lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're driving down the road. I wonder if you. I'm so hot not to get caught up now. But you're just so cool on your hands, through your hair, absolutely making me want you. And I don't know how it gets better than this. You take my hand and drag me headfirst, fearless. And I don't know. Drive slow till we run out of road in this one horse town. I want to stay right here in this passenger seat. You put your eyes on me, Houston, Texas. Now, capture it. read a song about something that you went through and you put details in the song like the person's name who it's about or or when it happened or exactly how you saw it and how you experienced it putting those songs out is sort of a risk I think she is this lyrical and expressive 
person who has to translate all of her life experiences into rhyme and into music. The way to keep her happiest was to sit her down, give her a pen and a journal, and she was happy. To go out on tour and put those songs to life and, and take the lyrics and portray them on a stage, that's really a very personal thing to do. I think the reason that people connect to Taylor is because she is unafraid to put her life out there, and I think people resonate to that kind of bravery. Thank you. And I loved your sign last night. It was so cool. Thank you. She has a really unique gift of songwriting. She sings about everyday things so well, and she uses it in such a positive way. I really, really admire that. I love you, Taylor. You're the best. We love you. I love you so much. You. I'm pretty sure everybody could just relate to one Taylor Swift song in their life. Taylor, listen, girl, girl to girl talk. Oh. You write songs about my life. Thank you so Me too. much. Everybody has the same stories, and most people just want to be heard. And she does a really good job at being heard and sharing stories. Yeah, Taylor, we love you. We love you, Taylor. I know that. You're supposed to be afraid of being vulnerable and you're supposed to be afraid of giving out personal information and details in your songs, but I just don't see how that's bad. Forever and Always is a song about a breakup that I had to really address. I don't know, I was asked about it in like every interview and and so at the, at the time that I was putting together the tour, I was really sick of getting that question. If you are naming the guys you've dated in your songs, why do you think any guy's gonna wanna date you? So I wanted to base the way that the song was approached on stage from the angle of having to talk about your personal life in an interview. Well, um, I guess in that situation, I just figure that if guys don't want me to write bad songs about them, then they shouldn't do bad things. Once upon a time, I believe it was a Tuesday when I caught your eye And we caught on something, I hold on to the night You looked me in the eye and told me you loved me But you just kidding, cause it seems to me this thing is breaking down, we almost never speak. I don't feel welcome anymore. Baby, what happened? Please tell me, cause one second it was perfect. Now you're halfway out the door, and I stare at the phone. You still hasn't called, and then you feel some love. You can't feel nothing at all. And flashback to when he said, forever and always. Nothing is the silence that cuts me to the core. Where is this going? But I knew for a minute, but I don't anymore. And I stare at the phone, he still hasn't called. And then you feel some love, you can't feel nothing at all. And flashback to when he said, Forever and always. Oh. There are a few things that I really just love doing on stage. Halfway through the song, I start to sort of lose my mind and throw a gigantic temper tantrum and, like, go insane. And uh, it ends up scaring the interviewer off. She runs off stage. I stand up, hit a high note, and then throw the interviewer's chair off of the giant platform on the stage. You know, throwing a chair every night is sort of like anger management. Back up, baby, back up. Did you forget everything?
goes on, you see in the natural progression of emotion after anger comes sadness. In the part where I get really sad, one of the nights at the beginning of the tour, I ended up putting my hand out, and this girl grabbed my hand. And then all of a sudden, I started feeling all of these girls grabbing my hand, and, and it was just this moment of they were kind of comforting me. And it's a really vulnerable and emotional part of the song, and I, I feel it every time I sing it. So for them to be holding my hands was really nice. It made me feel a little better. And so I just started putting my hand out every night. And um, there's like, there's something really, really cool for me in that connection. Like holding somebody's hand is such a personal thing. And um, I really like that part of the show every night. Back up, baby, back up. 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 every breakup there's that there's that initial jolt of anger where you want to throw a chair but then the reality underneath all of that is that you're really really sad and uh, you always end up kind of kneeling on the floor realizing that you just wish that you could back up the whole scenario and just make it end differently Life on the road is sort of like summer camp. Amos? Yeah. Hey, Tay. Are you wearing my headband again? I'm wearing our headband. We, we agreed we'd share. The Fearless Tour went all over the United States of America, went to Canada. We also toured in Japan and Australia, went to the UK. We decided to dress for the occasion. Yes, 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 yes. This tour has been going on for 15 months, and that's a long tour. The band and I find many ways to entertain ourselves when we're out on the road. We just get into just all kinds of trouble. What are they doing? I don't know. Eunice has Eunice. made her debut in London. Is in London, people. We're going to have shrimp on the bar. We just decided to keep on, keep on looping around the world on, on this tour. Try to read that word. In Halts Verzichinis. In Halts Verzichinis. That was perfect. <laughs> it means table of contents. Is it really? Fun fact of the day. And um, I'm so glad we did. have my two best friends out on the road with me, Caitlin and Liz. We are absolutely obsessed with each other. Did you know that dogs and bees can smell fear? No way. Oh, and the human head weighs eight pounds. You don't think I'm pretty? <laughs> Why won't you go to the airport? <laughs> That's normal, right? That's totally, totally normal. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll make him stay. Even though we can be a little silly on the road, the girls and I can be a little domestic. Liz, Caitlin, and I found a kitchen in the arena. Liz has a guy in her life. I'm not going to call him your boyfriend. Oh, he's going to be my boyfriend sure. eventually. Uh, but it's his birthday today, and we're going to wear chef hats and make him a cake.
Sometimes the girls and I spend a little too much time in the kitchen goofing around and have to race to hair and makeup. How long for the show? Well, it's almost eight. We have about 35, 40 minutes. 35, 40, 40 minutes we gotta, I gotta start doing my hair right now, actually. Let me just start while we're walking. Just yeah, do this. Just gotta get sprayed out. Yeah, I got it. I got it. A lot of people have hair and makeup people on the road with them, but we we've like done it this way. We don't really know any different. We've become like sisters. We share a dressing room, and every night we get ready in a row, all three of us, and we put on our makeup, and we do our hair, and we talk about boys and life. You said that your curlies look better than mine. I didn't say that. You said? I just said that you're a copier. We know each other so well. OK, so I accidentally burned Taylor's arm with my curling iron. Accident? It was an accident. My it, elbow's still smoking. It, where's, this, where's the owie? Point to the owie. There's nothing. What's so funny, Liz? What? what? He's got a girl with him. No! Who? She's driving the truck. Give me that! He let her drive the truck? I'm over it. This one's called Picture to Burn. Just sitting here planning my revenge. There's nothing stopping me from going out with all of your best friends. And if you come around saying sorry to me, but daddy's gonna show you how. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, dude. Knowing that Gillette Stadium was the last night of the tour, it was such a mixture of emotions because I loved this tour so much and I put everything into it. This is certainly a nice place to end the tour. I think this will do. This makes me really excited and happy. It's gonna be really sad when we wrap this up because it's so fun and it's it's been like the past year of our life every day. That's a big, giant me on that. walking out into the Gillette Stadium sound check and it was empty and I kind of lost it. I was just just dancing and running around frolicking. I was so happy that I couldn't control it and I just kind of acted like I was six. I remember looking out at the stadium and thinking, I can't believe we're playing there. Like I can't believe we're playing there and people are gonna fill that whole place up. I can't believe we're playing there and it's sold out and we're playing there. Like, it's just, it's so crazy to me that we were able to end the tour on such a huge, huge show. The reality is, we started out in a place, Knobles Grove, and Taylor was 11 years old, and she would start singing, and there was no one in the audience. And by the time she was finished, there'd be 500 people applauding her, you know? So when you think about where it started and how much she loves singing, how much she loves the fans, and everything else. What a way to end the year. This is it. Fearless, wrapping up. And this has been amazing. This has been the most wonderful group of people I've ever worked with. I miss everybody already. 15 months, it's been an incredible journey. The most rewarding experience. It's just been awesome. We sold out unbelievable. And honestly, when you have that many shows ahead of you, you think, will be, it's never gonna end. We live in magic world, and I honestly felt like this day wouldn't come. I just don't think there's a better way to go out than a big bang in the north. And honestly, it's sad to, to know that our time is up, but it, it holds memories and places and people in my heart that I'll, that I'll never forget. I had no clue he was big. I had no clue, man. This is amazing. 55,000 people, you can't beat that. Ooh, it's gonna be emotional, it's gonna be intense. It's gonna be a little dramatic. I don't know, man, it's, it's bittersweet. It really is. The tour coming to a close is like impending graduation. I never had that. I never had the countdown to when I was gonna go and hear my name called and throw my cap in the air. So, I guess this is that for me. Yearbooks! Yay! Yay. At the last show in the tea party room, we got everybody together and gave everybody these yearbooks we had designed. I think the yearbook took everyone by surprise. Get out of here. This is great. It really caught them off guard and in a very happy way, just gave them one more thing on that last day to be elated about. I never actually bought a yearbook in high school because I hated high school so much. So I'm glad that I have like something like this, you know, something that I actually appreciate and had a good time doing. I love it. I'm so glad I have this to look back on. Awesome. Really cool. And I'll never forget it. Pretty amazing. It's over. I'm glad that we did that because now everybody has this beautiful book of memories of what we had all undergone together. You know, everybody was like getting their yearbook signed. It very much felt like the end of the school year. Justin, I just wanted to say it's an honor to be um, performing with Taylor. Um, it's definitely an amazing experience. She's a great person. Uh, she's really funny, great to hang out with. And um, yeah, I'm just really honored to be here. So thank you so much, and we'll see you guys soon.
At the last huddle before we went on stage, I just told them how much I loved them and how I was so happy to have gone through this with them and that that group of people will be with me forever. Emotions are running high to the point where we feel a million different things per minute because this is the last time that we're gonna stand here in a circle like this. Trust is not something that comes easily by me, but I want you to know that I trust you and that's something that, because we've shared this experience together, will always be true. We've done this as this band of brothers, this band of thieves who somehow got a chance to stand on the biggest stages in front of the biggest crowds and we sold out that stadium. We did that. And I will always love you and I will always trust you. This is love and this is the one true love that I've ever had in my entire life. Let's go out there and be. <laughs> Taylor's journey has been one of complete surprises. Surprised that it worked. Surprised that people could relate to such personal songs, that people would wrap their arms around her and just be the most incredible fans that they could be. go out there and sing songs that I've written to girls who are just like me and they're singing the words right back and seeing that emotion come from them seeing people crying and people having the time of their lives is really so incredible to me that I wrote about a guy who made the choice to cheat on me and probably shouldn't have because I write songs. You should have said no. Strange to think the songs we used to sing, the smiles, the flowers, everything is gone. Yet today I found out about you Even now just a looking at you Feels wrong You say that you'd take it all back Given one chance It was a moment of weakness And you said yes You should've said no You should've gone home 
create the most exhilarating show to a crowd of like 55,000 people. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I can't believe it happened, and I can't believe we get to end the tour on that note. The band and I can't stop crying. Everybody's emotional. It's like at the end of this beautiful, amazing era. Like, I'm so happy that tonight went down the way tonight went down. This tour ending is very symbolic of more than just a tour ending. It's sort of like the entire fearless era of my life is ending, which is interesting because it's been a long time being on this particular project. Um, I started writing it when I was 16, and then, you know, was touring on the first record at the same time, put the album out when I was 18, really started to pick up uh, when I was 19. So it's been a beautiful, beautiful time with the word fearless being at the forefront of my life and my career. That project and that album has really um, gone further than I ever imagined it could. When I finished the tour, I flew right back to Nashville and was in the studio 24-7, basically. Video of the, year. the next album, Speak Now, is about my life from 18 to 20, and a lot happened from 18 to 20. She has truly put blood, sweat, and tears into this album. Her music grows with her. She's kind of like a timeline. You're really going to be able to just get to know Taylor on a more personal level. You may have thought that's impossible, considering everything she shared with us so far, but it gets better. She is happier than I've ever seen her. She's happy with who she is and the music that she's written, and most importantly, she's just happy with her life. I'm really excited about the next thing, because the next thing is something I'm really proud of already. I can't wait to create those lyrics on a stage, and I can't wait to turn those songs into music videos. I can't wait to see those lyrics painted on people's faces. It's gonna be really, really fun.